This is WGNW LP 95.7 FM, The Choice, Candler, Asheville. Did you know that essential oils were used in biblical times to protect God's people from pestilence? Frankincense, as an example, was said to be good for everything, from gout to a broken head. In other words, good from head to toe. 95.7 The Choice would like to thank Jackie McLaughlin for her generous support. For more information about essential oils, visit oil-essentials.com or call Jackie at 828-452-2958. That's 828-452-2958. Welcome to Holy Prophets Radio, a business show that applies God's Word to your work. Discussing business basics ranging from starting your own company to complex human resource challenges. Check out our complete schedule, archived shows, helpful downloads, and much more at holyprophetsradio.com. Now, get ready to be part of the revolution by applying biblical truths to your work with Holy Prophets Radio, hosted by me, Bradley Waldrop. Welcome to the show, and what an amazing week we've had. It has been something that, that I just, I, I should be writing a book, I think. This last week, I had this great opportunity to participate in a phone interview for the West Coast. And on the phone interview, what we were really talking about was what life is, looks like if you're really just trying to be obedient to God and not knowing what's going to happen, where you're going to go, and what it feels like, essentially, to get out of the boat. And... If you are in that particular position right now, I would encourage you to get online and go to Broken FM and really start to pay attention to the testimonials that they have already on their website. They have available through uh, their particular broadcast because it, it really is an encouragement to see how those individuals uh, really do sort of just pay attention to what God wants and do their just absolute best to follow through on all of that. And when we are going to air, when they air the interview for me, I'll put a link to it on our website at holyprophetsradio.com. I'll post it on Facebook at Facebook forward slash Holy Prophets. I'll probably do a tweet about it. Anyway, you'll have an idea that it's coming, but for me, it was so encouraging to be on the radio with others who understand what it feels like to get out of the boat and just do what God asks you to do and and really don't have any idea what that really means at the time, but then you see God's hand in so many things along the way, really an encouragement to me. The other thing that's such an encouragement to me is God is building this show like I have never imagined. We are currently now, somehow or another, connected to 39 countries around the world. 39 countries around the world. And in the United States, 43 states. We are almost to every state in the Union. And it is just absolutely amazing to me. What amazes me even more is when I get personal email from listeners of the show. I got a personal email from Tanzania, of all places. Tanzania? Are you kidding me? From South Africa? And the email is very short and sweet, but I wanted to read it to you because I think it's an encouragement to what we're doing here on the show and what hunger exists out there for God's Word. It says simply, I'm from Tanzania, and I really wish I could get words from the Book of God at this time. Can you believe that? That is amazing. And all we're doing here is talking about how to apply God's word to work. I mean, imagine what life could be like if those folks who do feel like they're called to do something and be obedient. Uh, you know, we, we've got neighbors that, that have this same yearning. And we really collectively could be just this huge huge mouthpiece for God. And I am just really encouraged by that and the support that I get here at 95.7, the choice. And uh, I mean, it's just uh, unbelievable. The radio interview, like I said, will be airing on Broken FM, which, uh, which are a series of FM channels all the way from Santa Rosa, California down to Monterey. That covers the greater Bay, Air Bay Area. And um, it's going to be during drive time, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I was able also this week to put together the 
overview of the TV special that we're going to do on WGGS Channel 16. Like we said last week, that show will be showing on Channel 16 if you're on DirecTV, on Dish Network, on AT&T U-verse, and then it will be also on Channel 6 if you're on Charter Cable. The first program will be the, the evening of September 9th, and we're going to have special guests of Dave Starkey, who is the founder of Asheville Lyric Opera, and Chuck Gallagher, who was my guest this last week, and we talked about business ethics. And so those two individuals are going to be on there. Uh, for a follow-up show in October, October 21st, we're going to have Scott Gajewski from Polydeck on, and then I'm working with a list here. I have another six guests that will look like they probably could be on the show, and that is just going to be testimonial about how to apply God's Word to your work. So if you're looking for practical examples of what life looks like in the workplace, when you finally say, God, you get it, you're the CEO, I'm going to hand over the gavel and the board of directors, and it's all about you and it's not about me, um, that will be an encouragement to me, I know for sure. So uh, if you watch, great. If you don't, then boy, um, I'll get to be the blunt one blessed in all of that, and, and it'll be fantastic. And the show, the first show, what we're really going to talk about is purpose, position, power, and possessions. We're going to talk about all of those things because they, they sort of get us all balled up. Uh, we have a, a world view that says that in, in our purpose there really is none, and and so we battle with that every day, trying to figure out what choices to make and what, what their consequences are. We talk about position, and God would say, I mean, the, the world would say, excuse me, the world would say that um, position is a sign of social status and that, that uh, we really do have people who are more important than others, um, completely different what, than what God has to say. Um, on the power side, hey, man, the world says dog eat dog, more power the better. And uh, then we look at Christ and we know how meek he was um, and understand that he had control of the power that he had and he, and, uh, and he was using it for the right reasons. And so uh, the last bit is possessions. Possessions make us chase our tail like crazy. If you are sitting listening to this show and you, you are trying to figure out how to apply God's word to your work and you know that you're working for a paycheck and that paycheck is not just paying for the necessities but it's paying for the fancy car and it's paying for the – the season ticket someplace, it's playing for uh, the, the fancy dinners out, and you just continue to chase and chase and chase, looking for more satisfaction out of the money. That particular show on WGGS Channel 16 will be for you, and I'm excited about that. You know, it is a common struggle that we all have, and God has a very clear plan uh, to move that forward. And last week, we talked about every choice having a consequence. We had a really great and fun guest in Chuck Gallagher. You can find out more information about Chuck on our website. And, um, you know, take, a, take a, a, a stroll down memory lane with him, and that is a one crazy ride. Uh, for uh, any of you who missed the show, he is a gentleman who uh, made some really bad choices, created a Ponzi scheme as part of a financial company, ended up um, not just... Uh, getting caught but going to jail and then after he came home from jail the IRS came and revisited him and said you owe us more money in fact you owe us more money uh, after paying restitution because um, you stole money and you want to I want you to pay taxes on the stolen money and he's just continuing to build his life back up to where he was um, has certainly repented for his sin paid his price to society and he is going from uh, conference to conference, company to company, and trying to help them uh, coach them through the business ethics side. And it was a really a fun and fantastic and very hopeful show. So if you get a chance to see that, uh, it will be posted on the podcast very shortly. Uh, the YouTube video will also be up. You can uh, redo that, or you can get back into the archives for Ustream, and we can go from there. This week, we have a really neat guest as well. The guest that we have is... Uh, an America's expert in behavior, and he was uh, brought to this particular show through a friend of a friend, and he has two radio shows in Georgia, and I'm excited to, to, that we're going to have him on the last half, and we're going to talk this this show about rebuilding trust in organizations, and I can tell you that this is, for me, one of the biggest uh, hot buttons I have because I work on a regular basis with organizations to help them become their the trusted source to their customers, whatever that looks like, and I help them on the leadership side to be trusted leaders. So the question is, is your company trusted? Is the organization you're working in trusted? And I can tell you the easiest way to figure that out. How much red tape do you have? 
Do you have a lot? Is there a bureaucracy that sits at the organization? Do you have to go through 15 different checks and, and balances in order to get anything done? Are you one of those companies who has a committee for everything? You can't make a decision on your own, and then when you finally do, it takes you an eternity to get something implemented? All of those are labor, layers of distrust in your organization. And I used to participate as the turnaround guy in companies. And what's so amazing is that during the turnaround process, you put the screws down on everything. You come in and you say, okay, well, we're bleeding from every vein we have, and we are going to figure out how to stop the bleeding. So you put tourniquets on everything. And those tourniquets look like policies and procedures. They say in order for you to spend money, spend time, spend energy on anything, you have to get it approved, and not just approved once, but you've got to get it approved. 15 times. Well, what that does is actually stops organizations from growing. The funny part about it is that if you really look at what the value of trust is in an organization, it, it is an efficiency. If you trust one another, you can get things done on a handshake. You can understand that someone not only keeps their word but earns their keep. You get a chance to work in an organization that really does pay very, very close attention to the personal value and the character value of the individual. And you rely on those character values to get something done. So if you, in the bigger picture, I mean, think about what that really looks like. If you are in ministry right now and you have um, a series of layers that you have to go through in order to get something done, the question is who don't you trust? And did you create a series of policies because of one individual or did you do it because it was habitual in the organization? Are you stopping the growth of your company because you don't trust the person next to you? Are you the one that screwed it up? And if you are the one that screwed it up, can you, you probably can't ever get away from it. I mean, it just feels like you're getting punished every cotton-picking day for the mistake that you made. So the question is, what well, really, what does that look like? And what I can tell you is that trusted individuals have sort of this makeup, and the makeup looks like this, really solid skills, something that they can get done. Really great character. Where, where, where does the character come from? The character traits are all biblical, and that has to do with, with our being created in the image of God and really understanding who God is and what God's personality does and doesn't do, right? So it's that trustworthiness and the respect, the respect, and it's honoring one another. It's honoring God's possessions in our own stewardship, lots of different things. And then really effective habits. If you don't have any of those, I mean, if you, I'm sorry, if you have all of those, but you're missing one, what happens is that people won't trust you. For instance, if you if you have no skill to get the work done, but you have really great character and wonderful habits, you're a really good guy, a really good gal. People like you, but they won't give you anything to do because they don't have any faith that you'll get it done. If you have really great skill, horrible character, but good habits, you can create a checklist and get things done, then there's usually a wake of destruction behind you and nobody wants to participate. So you can get it done, but you just ride everybody and destroy everybody's personality and, pro and, and people, you know, who they are, their own identity in the process. Nobody wants to trust you to do it. Now, if you are... One of those people who have really great skills, really great character, but the habits are so bad that you just can't keep it all straight. It's like giving somebody uh, a task to do and you know that it's going to go into this um, – into this maelstrom of chaos. It's just going to, you know, it's just going to, to whip into an absolute frenzy in order to get it done, and nobody wants to give you that. So you actually have to have these three things, and those three things are great skill, wonderful character, and good habits. Well, what happens if you don't have those is that people don't trust you. Well, the, the bigger issue in there is which one of those is the big problem. If you don't have skills, we can teach you skills. And a lot of people give you a lot of grace in the process. Oh, let's, you made a mistake. It's okay. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And that's okay. If you have really bad habits, even though there's chaos around, around you, that the people will still give you tasks to do, and they will help you develop the habits you need in order to be effective. And they will sit, and they'll have lots of patience in the process. And when we get back from our break, we're going to talk about the one particular or one particular flaw in 
the makeup of trusted individuals that is the hardest to get over. So stay tuned. WGNW 95.7, The Choice. 95.7 The Choice would like to thank Dry Pros for their generous support. Dry Pros has 27 years of experience in the cleaning, restoration, mold remediation, and waterproofing of homes and businesses just like yours. Whether it's a routine cleaning or restoration from flood damage or mold, the team at Dry Pros has the experience to get it done right the first time. Cleaning all types of floors, windows, fine area rugs, and upholstery, they cover it all. For more information, their number is 828-277-9511. That's 828-277-9511. Or visit them on the web at www.drypros.com. That's www.drypros.com. Where do you turn for Christian concerts and events? Where can you get news from a Christian perspective and encouraging articles written by and about the local Christian community? Turn to the Journey Christian newspaper. Available in print and online. Visit www.journeychristiannews.com. Or call 828-676-6535. The Journey Christian newspaper. Encouraging Christians on their walk with Christ. My God's not dead. He's surely alive. He's living. Welcome back to Holy Prophets Radio. Before the break, we were talking about what makes up a trusted person in an organization, and that was solid skills, really great character, and effective habits. And we said that if you don't have effective habits and you don't have the necessary skills to get the job done, oftentimes people are going to sit and work with you over and over and over again in order to teach those to you, and they're going to have the patience and grace along the way. And that's really fantastic, but where the real breakdown is and trust happens to be in the character side. Think about it. When somebody lies to you, when they steal from you, when they, um, you know, on the personal side, if you get cheated on, um, if if they are just using you for who you are, if they continue to uh, create rumors uh, in the organization, lots of these kinds of things, they're, they're character traits. And they are character traits that degrade the effectiveness of individuals and their performance at work. And one of the things that happens when we do that is that we we then have this breakup in the organization to a point where we start having to have policies and procedures in place. Hey, look, you know what? If Joe is going to work on this, we're going to have to have make sure he talks to the boss, and then the boss is going to have to talk to another boss and make sure that those bosses are all in, in tune before we say that Joe can go ahead and do this because the last time he did it, we couldn't trust that he got it done. And uh, he, told he, he told us that he got it done, but he really didn't get it done, right? I mean, that's just kind of the way it goes. And as I was doing a turnaround in organizations, what I found was that the lower tiers in the organization did a really great job of filtering uh, information before it got to the leadership, and their filtering was this bad, this bad character. They wanted to lie about. Uh, they wanted to give you half truths about what was <laughs> what was happening. And in order for us to fix it, we had to get to the truth. And in order to get to the truth, that's what we were really asking people to do: is just be honest with us and work through it. And then we would do what we could to get it fixed and continue to keep them whole in the process. Well. We have a really great example in, uh, in the Bible that tells us exactly what we need to do. It's sort of the equation in order to get through that. And if you've ever breached someone's confidence, if you have ever been that person that nobody could trust, and I mean, I've been that person. I don't know. I mean, raise your hand if, you, if you've been that person, but I've been that person. And you sit there, and it just, it just hurts when you finally figure out that, that they just don't trust you anymore. And what I would say is that if we if we look in the Bible, we're going to really find a really great story and almost this sort of checklist that God provides to us on how to get through those particular conflicts. And then at the at the tail end of the show, what we're going to do is we're going to bring on Scott Farrell, and he and I are going to have a conversation of what that really looks like in the workplace. How do you rebuild trust in organizations? And uh, and with real world examples, the best we possibly can. And, and and still protect the confidence of the individuals that we're talking about, and uh, and it's going to really be fun. 
What what we want to do though is we want to really talk about the exile era. And and if you know this show, you know that this show bounces from uh, one era in the Bible to the next, and we pull out those golden nuggets, the business parallels in each one of the eras. Uh, and God has written this book in my mind front to back as the CEO's Guide to the Galaxy. And what we're really going to do is we're going to look at the exile era, and it follows the kingdom era, and the, and the kingdom era was with David and uh, a whole bunch of unrighteous kings. And, and then all of a sudden, the house of Israel gets sent to Babylon. And if you can remember the funny name Nebuchadnezzar, you understand the ruler that was over uh, the, the house of as a house of Israel. The main character in this particular era is Daniel, and one of the most famous stories is Daniel in the lion's den. So if those folks who are listening to the radio um, have the, enough biblical knowledge to, to remember that story that, of Daniel in the lion's den, then you'll understand the biblical era we're in. And for the house of Israel, they were sitting in captivity in a culture that was not theirs, and they had no control. They were enslaved. And in all of this, they had time to think. It's sort of like the biblical timeout. Um, you know, let's, get, let's, send, let's send the house of Israel to the corner, sit them in the chair, and ask that they think about their behavior for a little while. Well, there were... Uh, there were prophetic words that came to them, uh, and if you look at the book of Ezekiel, that's where we're going to be today. We're going to be in the last half of Ezekiel, in chapter 33, starting around the 10th verse. Uh, what, what I want to say is that Ezekiel was a priest, and what had happened was uh, Ezekiel had the, a whole series of uh, encounters with God and trying to bring the word of God to the, the people of Israel, and in doing that, before the overthrow of Jerusalem, Ezekiel was saying, better be careful, better be careful, the temple in Jerusalem is going to tumble, the temple in, in Jerusalem is going to tumble. And then after word got back to the house of Israel that that really happened, then he started to say, yeah, but we're going to rebuild, we're going to be, re we're going to rebuild. And in all of that, it's very clear that Ezekiel had had this direct connection with God, and God is speaking directly to him about what makes um, this forgiveness possible and the rebuilding of trust possible. And if you just quickly look, there is one verse I want to bring up that is just so amazing. Um, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 10 says, Now as for you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have spoken, saying, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we are rotting away in them. How then can we survive? I think that that describes all of us when we know we have broken trust with someone else. We, it just it rots. I mean, we, we just feel like we're just rotting away inside. With, and, and we need forgiveness. We need to be able to be restored. And so what God says in his word is it's very specific. There are sort of four major steps. And those four major steps look like this. Repent. Practice justice, practice righteousness, and pay restitution. Those are the four. I, I, I know that, that those are big words. I, I don't know about you, but I don't sit all the time and try to figure out what repentance really means. I know that I've heard it, and I hear it over and over and over again. But if you think about it and you do a little bit of research, and I did a little research for you, so maybe this will help. On the repentance side, it really is uh, a couple different things. It is a true sense of one's own guilt and sinfulness. That is man up. It is yours. You did this. It wasn't somebody else's fault. You had made the choice, and you behaved badly, right? And so own it. The next is have this uneasiness about God's mercy through Christ, and that, and that you know that judgment's coming. And for those of you who are Christians, know who God is, and you also know the price that was paid for you by Christ. And to, to know that, that we have violated that trust, is, uh, it just sort of feels overwhelming. And then to have an actual hatred of what you just did, Right. This is, you know, I, I, I think this is for me, like talking to the kids when they're young, say you're sorry. And they say, ah, sorry. No, I mean, say it like you mean it. 
right? I mean, this is, <laughs> this is, that's repentance. Say it like you mean it. Uh, and, and so, and it's turning away from that particular sin. Whatever you did wrong, do, just don't do, let's not do that again. Learn from your mistake and go in the other direction. Practice justice really means to live within the law and make good choices, right? So, you, you say, look, I'm not going to do it anymore, and then you have a practice of staying within the rules. You stay within the lines as you're, as you're, you're drawing, as you're driving down the road. You stay on your own side. Practice righteousness, that would, be some, that would be, for me, being conformed to Christ. Figuring out who the personality of Christ is, being overwhelmed by his spirit within, within us, and being conformed to his image. And that is treating one another the way he would have us be treated, or uh, treat one another. And that is to really look at the two overwhelming laws. And those overwhelming laws are, first, love God with all of your heart and all of your soul. Second, love your neighbor as yourself. Right? Every, all the other laws, as Christ said, all the other laws can be summed up in those two. So that's being conformed to Christ. And the last is pay restitution. Uh Uh-oh, what does that mean? Restitution, I mean, think about it. And if you read the Old Testament, the Old Testament is very clear about what restitution is. If you steal one, you have to pay back many. And what that really means is, in my view, here's my view. uh, If you sit down, and it's totally my view, uh, if you sit down with someone and you say, look, I wronged you, how do I make it right? And they say, this is what I want you to make it right. I think my own personal view of this paying of restitution is to go at least that far, if not further. I think that what it means to say is to go back to them and say, you know what, I heard what you said in order for me to make it right for you. I'm going to do exactly that, but I'm going to do more. And I'm going to do more because I care about you and I care about the mistake I made and I really do feel like I need to do this in order to make things right between us. Now, when we do that, that, that is significant. And, and think about it. I mean, if you have been mistrusted in an organization, you probably have been yearning to try to figure out how to pay it back. I mean, how, how do I make this right? If you know people who have been distrusted in the organization, you have probably said, you know what, in order to make it right, I know what I need you to do. If you could simply sit down and have that conversation, you could really get through an awful lot of it. And uh, and I think so if you go back and you look, God has never been quite this clear in in certain things for me. And in chapter four or in chapter thirty three of Ezekiel verses fourteen and fifteen, this is how it reads and and I'm gonna read it because uh, I think that it's like this this really great biblical checklist that we don't normally get, and I'm just really excited by being able to find it and go, Wow, that is so neat. So it starts this way. But when I, when I say to the wicked, you will surely die, and he turns from his sin, right, turns from his sin, and practices justice and righteousness, if a wicked man restores a pledge, pays back what he has taken by robbery, walks by the statutes which ensure life, statutes which ensure life without committing inequity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Right? So there it is. It's turn from sin, that repentance. Practice justice, we just talked about that, like activate, you know, work within the lines and righteousness. And if a wicked man restores a pledge, pays back, right, pays back what he has taken by robbery. So we have those, and it is this repentance, it is practice by, practice justice, practice righteousness, and practice restitution. And just before we go to the break, I would be absolutely and totally remiss if I didn't say this. When I read through the book of Ezekiel, it simply says... It, you could have the best life you would have ever imagined. You could be doing things for God every single minute of every single day, but as soon as you make a mistake, it wipes all of that out. And you still have the sin you have to pay for. Just because you have this wonderful life that you're following Christ, um, or you're, fo- you're trying to figure it all out, and, and maybe you don't know Christ, uh-oh, here is where the real problem is. Right? If you don't know Christ and you live this life that is just good behavior, you feel like, hey, look, I'm good. And then you make one mistake along the way. All of that stuff gets taken away. And you end up having to, to pay for that. Well, here's the beauty of it. Christ has already paid for it for us. And if we really understand that, what, we, what we're really saying is that, oh, man, what an re- absolute relief to know that I can still repent. I can still ask for forgiveness. And I, and I personally... 
personally have to do this every single day. And I know that Christ has paid the price for me and that uh, one day I will get a chance to ask God face to face what all the answers to all of my questions are and I will get a chance to be in his presence and I will be seen as clean by and through the blood of Christ. I mean, what an amazing thing. And so if, you, if you're in a workplace right now where there's a lot of distrust and, and there is this need for a Savior, what an opportunity, what an amazing way for, for you as a Christian, if you're here listening to this, uh, here as a Christian, to be able to witness to other people what Christ has done for you in restoring you uh, to a right relationship with God. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk to Scott Farrell about this kind of restoration of trust in organizations. Stay tuned. WGNW 95.7, The Choice where we believe a song can still change the world. Programming at 95.7 The Choice is made possible with the generous support of business partners like Area 22 Guitars. Area 22 Guitars is Western North Carolina's only boutique guitar shop. Whether it's an American-made all-tube hand-wired amp like Matchless, divided by 13, Car, or Fargent, or a U.S.-built custom luthier electric guitar brand like Anderson, PWE, Zion, Rowan, or Gatto. Area 22 Guitars specializes in the unique needs of the discerning musician. They carry a full line of boutique effect pedals like Keenly, Exotic, Rockbox, Manitone, and Wobbler. And their acoustic guitars include Breedlove, Larravee, Eastman, Bedell, and Crafter. Area 22 Guitars, not your average guitar shop. For more information, go to area22guitars.com or call them at 828-884-2222. That's 828-884-2222. What is the center of your universe? Has that brought you true satisfaction? The center of your universe will determine if you are truly satisfied. Jesus is the center of the universe, the source of all satisfaction. Curious? Explore Centrality, weekly opportunities at 5 p.m. at 12 South French Broad Avenue in the Cornerstone Church Sanctuary. For more info, go to www.centralitychurchashville.org. Did you know that Cystis, also known as Rose of Sharon, has been studied for its effectiveness in the regeneration of cells? Cystis affects the upper part of the brain and may also help quiet the nerves, calm the insomniac, as well as elevate the emotions in meditation and prayer. 95.7 The Choice would like to thank Jackie McLaughlin for her generous support. For more information about essential oils, visit oil-essentials.com or call Jackie at 828 828- 452-2958. That's 828-452-2958. My God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, like a liar. Welcome back to Holy Prophets Radio. Before we left on the break, we were talking about what life looks like if you are in a an, in an organization in which there has been a trust breakdown. We were talking about the fundamentals of, of trusted individuals, really great skills, solid character, good habits. Um, and we also said that God has uh, this really great framework for us to get through the forgiveness part, and He shows it to us in Ezekiel 33, chapter or excuse me, chapter 33, verse 10 through about 20. And the equation sort of looked like this: it looked like repentance. It looked, it said, you know, repent, practice justice, practice righteousness, and pay restitution. And the real question is. 
What does that look like in life? What does that look like in your own organization? How do we get to that point? What kinds of conversations can we have? Who do we talk to? How do we do that? And on the phone today with us is Scott Farrell. And Scott Farrell is America's behavior expert. He spent 20 plus years transforming behaviors and creating magical lives for his clients, readers, and listeners. And whether he's on the radio, TV, speaking, writing, Whatever, he guides you through the transfa transformation of your thoughts, behaviors, feelings, and actions to produce the results that you want. Joyful, more fulfilling lives and relationships. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Hey, thank you for having me today. It's really great to have you on the phone, and like I, t like I would just sort of brought you in on the show here, we have been talking to the listeners about trusted organizations, and I just wanted to just get them a, a little bit better picture of who you are and your own background and the kinds of things that you do uh, for others in whether they be family organizations or family owned businesses or, or those kinds of things. Yeah, I, uh, I work with families. I work with married couples, couples getting ready to get married. Uh, specialty is putting families back together from a discipline standpoint. I uh, come in and actually teach courses on parenting, how to parent, because parents not just about discipline. I always relate it back to purpose. You know, we are given children, we get to rent them from God for about 18 years, uh, and then God expects us to have them ready for their purpose, for the Great Commission, for the rest of their lives. And I always tell people to think of zero to 76. They start at zero, but we have to prepare them as an actuary firm would say, we live to about 76 in the United States. We have to prepare them throughout their lifetimes for their purpose and what God has in store for their lives to profess his kingdom. And that's how I approach business, business families. I work with a lot of second and third generation business owners. As we both know, there can always be a little uh, irritation within those organizations because you're dealing with your brother and your mother and your father, not just an employer or an employee. And then I go in and help so many families across the country put it all back together, make sense out of it, and make it great for the kingdom. That's that's fantastic. And you know, when you were talking about the second and third generation family owned business, uh, what you may not know about me is I got a chance to work in a lot of those and the dysfunction <laughs> is absolutely overwhelming sometimes. And oh, yeah, uh, you know, and so one of the things that we were we were sort of talking about is in this process of, of rebuilding and, and uh, trying to get forgiveness and move on past that and, and get into a trusted relationship internally. I know God really does give us this neat blueprint, but what are the practical ways that that really kind of transpires in an organization? What would you ask someone who has an employee that they can't trust anymore? What would you ask for them to start to do in order to start rebuilding the trust? Well, when I'm talking to an employer who has an employee they can't trust, I tell them to fire them. However, if I've got the reverse and I've got an owner where none of the employees trust them, it's just like a family. Why don't your employees trust you? What have you done to make sure that they have absolutely no faith in what you say? So when you start, you got to say, I'm sorry. It's funny, I sit down with my husband and wife a lot of times and go, has anybody in this group here said they were sorry and asked for forgiveness? Start there. And now we've got to build back the trust, but we've got to do it through respect. Are you doing what you say? If you say it, did you do it? If you guaranteed your employee something, did you follow through on it, good or bad? Did you reward someone for doing the great job? Do you pay them respect? Do you praise your employees in front of all the other employees? Are you doing what it takes to earn the redemption, earn their trust, and make them want to stay with you as an employer? That's yeah. where you start. You know, I, it's funny you should say that, and, and, I, and I absolutely appreciate where you're coming from on the employer. If you talk to an employer who can't trust an employee, I know oftentimes you can't trust that employee because you've given them three and four and five and six chances yep. to get it right. And your your guidance there and my guidance are, are – uh, and I come from it from an operational standpoint. You come from it from a behavioral standpoint, and they are the, exactly the same. You know, that particular, that particular person uh, is, is making your life – horrible liberate them from the pain and agony that they're giving you and others and let them try it somewhere else um, the unfortunate part is that that has to happen sometimes and and in family-owned businesses that's where it gets really screwed up because you don't want to have to fire your brother yeah I, that's where I always have to sit people down and go okay the company's not the problem 
this relationship originated a long time ago. What are the key issues between the two of you? If we don't find a solution here, I've actually talked companies into selling. I sat down with one particular family and I said, uh, right now, from a working standpoint, this is never going to work. However, I know deep down inside, both of you said that you love each other and mom and dad love each other and we went through the whole dynamic. I said, the best thing for you guys, if you want a personal relationship, is go ahead and sell off. I got a call, I think, two weeks later, and I don't think I've talked to happier people. Oh yeah, I mean you you let you end up you you end up giving them the excuse that they needed to actually act on something that they've been wanting to do for a long time. Oftentimes. Oh yeah, you you've given them the freedom to say, "Hey man, he's right. We can all do this." Because you feel so tied from a from emotional standpoint to the business. Sometimes you can't give yourself permission to go ahead and pull the trigger. And and this person, I, I talked to one of them about a month ago, and. I don't think I've heard a happier voice on the other side. Each person went their own way, started what they perceived as what they needed to do, and now the family dynamic is starting to work out, and they're actually starting to love each other again. Well, what a hopeful story that is. I mean, goodness, oh, if, yeah. if if we had uh, simply 10% of the family-owned businesses here, what you and I just said, uh, it yeah. would relieve so much stress across this nation. It's unbelievable. Goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It would be amazing how much, uh, I don't want to say happy because it's based on temporary emotion, but there would be some joy in each one of their lives where, you know, it's so funny. I, I always look around and ask Christians, and I, and I, I was a borderline Satanist before I became a Christian, and I used to look at Christian and go, you know, you guys are the only ones that don't have any joy in your lives. <laughs> I have more joy in you guys' lives, and I don't even believe in God. And so you look at a, a Christian-owned, family-owned business, and they're so irritated with each other, you don't have a chance to see any joy. And the employees don't see any joy in their jobs, so therefore they don't see a future, so therefore they move somewhere else. You know, you just you said something that I had forgotten to provide the, the, the um, listeners a little bit of feedback for that part of your life where before you became a Christian. And I think that it would be helpful to just sort of get the thumbnail sketch of that real quick just because – I think that there are individuals who listen to radio programs like this, and they say, "Well, yeah, you've been living a Christian life your whole time, the whole your whole life. You don't understand what it's like to be me. You don't understand what it's like to have the same struggles and the same issues. And uh, like the the temptation of this crazy, sinful world, nearly as much as I do. Just if you could give me just sort of a, a quick thumbnail sketch of what that looks like for you, would that be great? Oh yeah, I had less than an ideal childhood, and I ended up. Uh you know, I, I went out of my way to break every commandment, at least more than once. And I hated Christians. Uh, they were the only people that were cruel to me as a child. My idols when I was a little boy were motorcycle gang members. And I decided when I was a kid I either wanted to be in the Hells Angels or, or the Vandals or one of these groups. And um, I, I just and I lived my life to that lifestyle to about the age of 21. And I want, you know, the Church of Satan kind of fit my lifestyle. Drugs, no consequences, extreme violence. Uh, women, booze, you name it. I had a drug problem, my alcohol problem. And a guy had been witnessing to me for about a year, and finally I looked at him and I said, all right, if you promise to never mention the word Jesus again, the rest of my life, I'll go to church with you on Sunday just to get you off my back because I hate everybody in the church. Well, at 1158, uh, July 13, 1986, I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Wow. Went down to the church. Uh, a gentleman named Dr. Robert Koo grabbed me by the hand. Led me to Jesus, the drugs, the alcohol, the women, the feelings, everything ended that day. And I actually had a soul and a conscience. And I'd done a lot of bad things to a lot of people. And for the next, I think it took me six months, I went around the state of North Carolina, South Carolina, wherever I had to go, and personally apologized to every single one of those people and asked for forgiveness. That's an that's an amazing story, and I say that because that is the this biblical principle we're talking about. It's own it. You know, right? Man up. This is your this is your mistake. It's your set of of choices that has caused this uh, discord between you and me, the people you, you have wronged, and and it is this very systematic thing of saying I'm sorry, and it's and it's saying I'm sorry and saying it like you mean it. Um, boy, I give you all the kudos in the world to, to have the courage to do that one after another for such a long time. That's amazing. Well, I had never had a conscience. I didn't know what it felt like to felt the pain of another person. And all the 
of a sudden I get saved, and I went to the pastor two days later. I'd been in tears. I was like, I, I, I lost my life. I, I've been evicted from my life, the life I had, the only one I knew. What, what is this feelings thing? I have feelings for another person. And the pastor started laughing, gave me a big hug, and I, this was a man who was with me for the rest of my life until he passed away a few years ago. And uh, he walked me through it, told me what to do, and I went and did it. And um, I still speak to some of those people. That was uh, 86, so that was a little while back. Some of those people still keep in touch with me 27 years later. Wow, what a great testament to um, just being honest and authentic with people and, and knowing what it feels like to put yourself in their shoes and, and feeling the pain that they do. That's that's a, an amazing story. And and with that, one of the things that we see in this equation that God gives us is the need to pay restitution. And what I thought we would do is we'd take a real quick break and then talk about what that really looks like in an organization. How do you pay restitution for maybe the emotional hurt that you provide? You're not stealing something. You're not, you're not uh, removing something from someone. Uh, but, you, but there is some sort of emotional penalty to have to pay. So, right. uh, so for the listeners, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. The new music choice for Asheville. WGNW. 95.7 95.7 The Choice would like to thank Dry Pros for their generous support. Dry Pros has 27 years of experience in the cleaning, restoration, mold remediation, and waterproofing of homes and businesses just like yours. Whether it's a routine cleaning or restoration from flood damage or mold, the team at Dry Pros has the experience to get it done right the first time. Cleaning all types of floors, windows, fine area rugs, and upholstery, they cover it all. For more information, their number is 828-277-9511. That's 828-277-9511. Or visit them on the web at www.drypros.com. That's www.drypros.com. Are you ready for the ride of your life? Then fasten your seatbelt. We're heading down the highway for a wide open, full throttle encounter with God. You heard it right. That is the great adventure. It's a journey into the heart of God. Nothing, absolutely nothing, not landing an F-16 on an aircraft carrier, not shooting Class 5 rapids in a rubber raft, not bungee jumping from a bridge. Nothing is like exploring a limitless God. Developing an intimate connection with Him that transforms your life now and for eternity. Our roadmap for this trip is the Bible. Our Bible teacher, Dennis Thurman, directs us on the ride of our life. Catch it here on WGNW 95.7 at 11 on Sunday mornings. See you then for The Great Adventure. My God's not dead, He's surely alive. He's living on the inside. Welcome back to Holy Prophets Radio. If you just joined us, we are on the phone with Scott Farrell, who is America's behavior expert. We are talking about how to rebuild trust in organizations and we talked a little bit about this this equation that God gives us in Ezekiel chapter 33 starting about verse 10 going to about 20 and it has to do with repentance and and uh, justice and living just this this life that really recognizes I did someone wrong and I'm going to turn away from it and I'm going to do the better, very best I can to to be doing the right things. And the last bit that we didn't talk about yet is restitution. And it's very clear what we can do with restitution if we steal something from someone. We pay that back, but if you look at biblical uh, principles, it actually says pay it back, but pay it back multifold, two, four, six, five times, whatever it looks like. And um, one before, in the very beginning of the show, we were talking a little bit about what that means to me. And oftentimes for me, and Scott, I'm going to ask you your opinion in here. Um, for me, oftentimes it means to, to, when I have emotionally wronged somebody, to go back to them and say, how can I make this right? Do what they ask me to do, and then more. Um, and that would be that sort of multifold payback. And when I do that, I seem to get a good response. But um, you know, from the America's behavior expert, I'd, I'd love to hear what your opinion is, Scott. Well, people always have an idea of what it is that you've done and how they want it uh, rectified. Like if I go to a restaurant and I'm not happy with my meal, if you want to keep me coming back as a customer, 
just make me happy. What do I want? Well, I always tell the restaurant owner what I'd like. Either uh, just give me another plate of whatever it is because I'm hungry, or if you give me my money back, I'd be glad to come back to your establishment. Well, in a relationship, what is it the person wants? Well, they'll tell you if you ask them. All right? And ask them, what are the three things that I need to do to make this right? And then they'll tell you. And then you can do them. I always tell people, just be true to your word. If you tell these people you're going to do something, just do it. Don't make a big production out of it, but just do it. And if you're straight up with people, you're honest with people, and you follow through with your word, the rest will take care of itself. That's, I mean, that's such clear, simple guidance you could provide people. And it takes courage to actually ask them what will make it right. And you're right. When you do... People are actually anxious to try to figure out how to make it right for you. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Well, I appreciate that. And, Scott, I want to be able to give our listeners a chance to be able to find a way to connect with you, whether it's online, uh, next place you're going to be, uh, or your radio show, whatever it might be. Could you could you just let us know how we could do that? Sure. Uh, my website, uh, i got to spell it because my mom and dad spell my name differently, S C O T. F-E-R-R-E-L-L, that's scottferrell.com. Also do radio here in the Atlanta area. Uh, my station is WDUN, so it's WDUN.com. Uh, you can go to my site or uh, to, the, to the radio station site. The name of the show is Modern Family Rules. Uh, teach people how to transform their behaviors of their families, their lives, and their jobs, and create magic. And they can just type my name in Google. I think my, my manager slash wife slash best friend said, I think there's 30 pages now. So you can find me if you need me. <laughs> That's fantastic. I really appreciate the wisdom and the perspective you bring to this particular topic. And I'm looking forward to a better relationship with you. And I, get, I do get a chance for the listeners. I get a chance to see Scott this afternoon or this evening at a, a common friend's house. And I'm just really looking forward to learning from you, Scott. And um, I know that our listeners, if they are anything like me, are absolutely blessed by the last uh, 20-some minutes we spent together. Thank you very much for joining the show. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care, Scott. Take care. Bye. All right. Well, here we go. We are back uh, from our interview with Scott. What a neat individual. He has a, a really unusual perspective in life, and he literally has become the national expert in a lot of different things. He's been on an amazing number of shows. He's a nationally recognized bestseller. He has uh, two radio shows, The Rockstar Life and Modern Family Rules. He's won uh, a writing award called The Golden Quill. He's been an expert resource back to USA Today, Newsweek, and The Wall Street Journal. I mean, an amazing individual with some amazing perspective and and really neat experience. So really, what I would ask you to do then, as we, as we are sort of doing our best to wrap up the show here is think about what life would be like if I mean we talked in the very beginning about the organizations where we know that there's no trust and we know there's no trust because of the layers of bureaucracy that exist what does it really take for you to get your job done on a daily basis if it is an absolute struggle because the entire organization is paying the price for one or two individuals who screwed it up in the past and you have layer upon layer upon layer of bureaucracy bureaucracy and red tape in order to get anything done, you live your life in an untrusted organization. So what would life really look like if you were to punish the person who was responsible for it, and like we, we were talking here on the phone, if you liberate the person you can't trust from the organization because you've already given them plenty of times to make it right, um, then you can start to remove some of the layers that, that are there. If you are the person that screwed it up, and what I'm telling you is that there are individuals who are listening to this program who have screwed it up before, and I am one of them. In fact, I, I screwed it up so bad one place um, on a, a technical problem that I had created. I, I made a mistake in math. And when I made a mistake in math, it got published in the local paper, and then we looked like we couldn't we couldn't be trusted. And uh, there were layers and layers and layers of bureaucracy for the work that I was doing, and I had to give it to my boss, who had to give it to his boss, who had to give it to his boss in order to get anything done. Uh, I got to a place where I had to literally do these same things. I had to go and say, look, that was me. I'm sorry. I own it. And then I'm going to do the following things in order to, um, to make it right, and I'm going to follow the rules after that. 
that. Well, imagine what life would be like at your organization if you're that same person, if you are the person that screwed it up so bad that everybody is looking at you and saying, now we've got all these extra rules because of you. Well, what, what it's, today is the day. Today is the time. A Monday when you get into the office, today if you're at the office, um, when you're driving around in your truck, wherever you are, today is the day to go back to the boss and say, you know what, I own it. It's mine. I'm really sorry. And I am going to do what I have to do in order to make it right. So tell me, what does it what does it take to make it right? And then when they tell you, follow through, get it done. Imagine what life can be like for you. Um, imagine what what life could be like for your coworkers if you choose to do that. I mean, the amazing change in your business is just phenomenal. And what I would say to that is is you know have the courage, get it done. And I am really looking forward to hearing the stories as you post them online, uh, if you send me an email, or however you do that. And when you do send me an email, I, I'd like to you to send it to bradley at holyprofitsradio.com. If you send it to bradley at holy, holyprofitsradio.com, and it's profits, P-R-O-F-I-T-S. Um, if you send it to me, I'm going to do everything I possibly can uh, to protect your own anonymity if you need it, and uh, also use it as an encouragement. Uh, for the show, answer your questions on the show, however that works out. You can find out more information about this show on holyprofitsradio.com. And what I wanted also to say is that I am absolutely blessed by the local radio station, 95.7 The Choice, WGNWLP, that hosts this show every week. And we are here every Saturday morning. We're replaying it now on Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock. And, um, you know, they have a brand new website. It's called thechoice957.com, thechoice957.com. The new website has an opportunity for you to be able to interact with the other shows that they have there, featured artists. If you happen to be an independent artist in the area and you're trying to figure out how to get some exposure, um, that's a great place to at least start. And uh, I know that they've been a total blessing to me, and I know they've been a blessing to this particular community. Next week when we get together, not only am I going to be able to share a little bit more with you about the TV program w on WGGS Channel 16 that we're going to be doing on September 9th, and we're going to be talking about the, your purpose position, power, and possessions as it relates to work, and uh, we're going to be bringing on guests there. Not only am I going to be able to provide you more feedback on that, but I'm also going to be able to, um, we're going to talk a little bit about maintaining the health of your company, and we have for us a guest on that particular show that is a an author, uh, we're going to have another call-in guest, and, and uh, the author lives in the Midwest, and she has written a book, and the book is... Uh, giving to the or or stewardship to the point of giving, and it's sort of a fundamental shift in paradigm for you as to looking at your organization and the power your organization has in order to do the kingdom work in your in your particular specialty. So we're going to have a really great uh, time with that. And uh, we, like I said, we will be coming back to the program that was done on Broken FM. If you missed the front end of the show, I would like to say that the Broken FM did this interview with me this last week, and they are going to be airing it in the west co or on the west coast in the north and south bays. Uh, during drive time, I'll give you a date for when that happens. And then we are just going to be... Uh, working like crazy to continue to apply God's word to your work. And when we, uh, when we join you next week, we are looking forward to hearing those stories. Send me those emails. If you're in Tanzania, send me another one. I would love to get that from you. And uh, I hope that God richly blesses you and your work. And uh, have a great week. He's not dead. He's surely alive. He's living.